Hello and welcome again to this particular session. So on demand, question number 3B of December 2022 is on the card. So this is the question actually which we are going to take up. Correct, and we will, because of paucity of time, it's quite obvious and lots of things are to be done simultaneously, concurrently. So sometimes it becomes a little bit difficult for us to accede to your request. But anyway, today we got the time acceding to your request, trying to solve this almost unsolvable question. Let's have a look over here. Given below are the extracts of the balance sheet of this particular company and you all are having the notes. Correct, at least this question paper, question number three, part B of your, what we call suggested. Uh, December 2022. Given below are the balance sheet of X Limited and Y Limited. In this case, as you can see, their equity share capital is 5 lakh and 10 lakh. Besides, 8% preference share capital is also there to the extent of 1 lakh and 2 lakh. Then they have got general reserve, statutory reserves, <coughs> then profit and loss account. Statutory reserves are to be maintained by such entities that operate uh, in some notified zones. They actually have to uh, create what we call some reserves because of some legal foundation, mandation, uh, uh, you can say because of law or authority. So statutory reserves are 2 lakh, 1 lakh, then 12% debentures, 2 lakh, 1 lakh, current liability, and then prop besides that only 3 assets, property, plant and equipment, non-current investments, and then we have got current assets so far. Now what is happening in this particular question, question states that two companies agree to amalgamate as on 1st of April 2022. So on this date, this particular company, they have decided that we are going to amalgamate. So they, this is X Limited, this is Y Limited, correct? And they have formed a new company, XY Limited. From the accounting perspective, from the accounting perspective, we will say that XY Limited has taken over X Limited and XY Limited has taken over Y Limited. Even though both these two companies are merging and and becoming a single new entity, yet from the accounting perspective, we say that XY Limited happens to be purchasing company while these two companies will be considered as vendor company. Under AS14, we call them vendor company instead of acquiry company. This is your purchasing company, not acquirer company as per AS14. Is it clear to you or not? Now, so Purchasing company, because now taking over the business of X Limited and Y Limited, we will have to infer it in this manner. Quite obviously, purchasing company X, Y Limited will have to deliver them some purchase consideration. So now the further information given in the question that goodwill of Y Limited on the date of takeover is estimated at 48 lakh and Y Limited's goodwill has been considered at rupees 38 lakh. Besides that, property, plant and equipment of X Limited and Y Limited were valued at 10% above the book value on the date of the takeover. So the date on which XY Limited took over these two companies, the property, plant and equipment which is appearing at 19 lakh and 7 lakh 60 have been taken over at 10% above book value, you can say so. <laughs> Similarly, Non-current investment, that is long-term investment of X Limited and Y Limited, were considered at four lakh sixteen and six lakh twenty-six thousand. So, in fact, the revised value of all the items have been given: property, plant, and equipment, non-current asset, property, plant, and equipment, and non-current asset. Besides these three assets, one more asset now has taken place, that is goodwill. Correct. So, purchasing company will assume the assets, the liabilities of these companies. There are. You know, Three assets which are given in the balance sheet and of course the fourth one we have already gone through. Then besides that there are two current liability, current liability, 12% debenture and current liability. Remember one thing, purchasing company cannot take over the share capital and the what we call reserves of the what we call acquiry company or vendor company as we call them. Now the first information in this particular question is related to, related to this particular item that is 12% debentures of X Limited and Y Limited are discharged by purchasing company XY Limited by issuing by issuing such number of its 15% debentures of 100 each so as to maintain the same amount of interest so as to maintain the same amount of interest what does it mean First of all, you have to look at the amount of the debenture of the respective company. Total number of debenture, total worth of debenture, rupees. Total debenture, total worth of debentures of X Limited happens to be 2 lakh and of Y Limited happens to be 1 lakh and the rate of interest happens to be 12%. Keep it in mind this way. Purchasing company XY Limited 
is telling to X and Y Limited that we will issue you 15% debenture against your 12% debenture. Let us say you are X Limited, you are holding 2 lakh worth of debenture and I am the purchasing company. What I am telling you that in lieu of your 2 lakh, 12% 2 lakh debentures, I will issue you 15% debenture. But I will issue you 15% debenture in such a manner that you are going to derive the same worth of interest which you were deriving earlier. Correct? So how to find it out? Just have a look over here. Here I have given correct solution. First of all, here I have written and all copyright reserves are with me. Needless to add that. Anyway, you have every right to actually copy it. No problem. It is it was just for the sake of fun. So here, first of all, explain this particular point, explanation to point number one. Just a moment, I told you, you are X limited, you are having 12% debentures or 2 lakh and similarly Y limited is having rupees 1 lakh worth of debenture. Because you are having 12% debenture, first of all you compute the amount of interest which will be equal to 24,000 and in this case the amount will be equal to 12,000. That means presently through your debentures, you are debenture holders of X limited and Y limited. Through your holdings of debenture of these respective companies, you are getting 24 and 12,000 worth of what we call interest. Now, I am the purchasing company. What I am trying to tell you, I will issue you 15% debenture, but I will maintain the same rate of interest. So, what will be the worth of debenture? What will be the worth of 15% debenture which I will issue to you so that still you get 24,000 worth of interest? So, it is easy to find out. 15% of what? Question mark reflects of what? Is equal to 24,000. Correct? So you can easily find out 15 by 100 into X is equal to 24,000. So 24,000 into 100 divided by 15, you can find out that purchasing company XY Limited will issue 1,60,000 worth of debentures to you. You are having 1 lakh six, uh, you are having 2 lakh worth of debenture, 12%. You are having 12% debentures worth rupees 2 lakh but now we will give you 15 percent debenture but value will be 1 lakh 60. now if you will compute 15 percent of 1 lakh 60 it will be equal to 24. we are doing so in order to maintain the rate of interest that is what question has asked us to do likewise here you are going to compute the what we call amount of debenture against 1 lakh worth of debenture you are getting 12,000 worth of interest so 15 percent of what is equal to 12,000 this is how you have to find out and then you can easily find out that 80,000 worth of debentures you are going to issue to the vendor company. Indirectly, it also means that your, your because I am taking over X limited and Y limited, you are X and Y limited, remember one thing, whenever I would say it, yours. That means your debenture of 2 lakh, I have taken over only at 1 lakh 60,000. Similarly, Y company's debenture holders were taken over at 80,000. Indirectly, it also means this way out. Is it clear to you? So this is the explanation with respect to point number two. Now we come over to point number three. What does point three holds? <clears throat> the issue of such an amount of fully paid 10% preference shares of XY Limited at 125% as is sufficient to discharge 8% preference shares of X and Y Limited at a premium of 20%. Earlier, <clears throat> we had an agreement with the debentures. Now we are telling uh, to the preference shareholder of your company, X and Y Limited. Right now, what actually we are telling, just have a look over here, explanation to point number three. Right now, X Limited is having 8% preference share capital of rupees 1 lakh. Let me have a look over the question. 1 lakh and 2 lakh. The, this is the amount of capital given in the balance sheet. Is it clear to you or not? Yes, sir. 8% preference share capital 1 lakh and 2 lakh. Now, as per the agreement, I will give you 20%. As per the agreement, I will pay you at 20% premium. So, 20% of 1 lakh is equal to 20,000 and 20% of 2 lakh is equal to 40,000. That means, instead of 1 lakh, purchasing company is telling to the preference shareholders of X Limited that we are going to pay you at 20% premium means we are going to pay you 1 lakh 20, 1 lakh 20,000. Not 1,25, this is printing mistake. 1,20,000 worth of amount of preference shares. Similarly, here we will pay you 2,40,000 worth of preference shares. 
Correct? Is it clear to you? This is what this particular line suggested in point number three that purchasing company will make the payment of payment to the preference shareholder of respective companies at 20% premium. Means I will have to pay you 1 lakh 20 and 2 lakh 40. But how I am paying you? In order to pay you, I have decided that I will issue my companies, my companies, purchasing companies, 10% preference shares. Obviously, I will have to give you 1,20,000 worth of preference shares. 1,20,000 worth of preference shares. No doubt about that. And obviously, to Y Limited, I will have to pay 2,40,000 worth of preference shares. If I want to know how many number of shares I am issuing, because it is given that purchasing company will issue preference share at 125%, you can divide it by 125 to know the number of preference share which you would issue, although that is not needed. What you needed is how much payment you are making to the preference shareholder. You are going to make 1,20,000 payment to the preference shareholder. For that, you are going to issue 10% preference share. Similarly, you are going to issue 2,40,000 worth of preference share to Y Limited. And as I told you, if you are interested in finding out how many preference share you are going to issue, you can definitely then what we call divide it by 125. That's a different matter. Is it clear to you or not? Yes, sir. So this was the explanation with respect to point number three. Now we come over to point number four. The equity shares of XY Limited are to be at a nominal value of rupees 10 each. Equity shares of XY Limited are to be of a nominal value of rupees 10 each. Credit it at piece 8 paid up and issued at rupees 15 per share. What does it mean? The equity shares of X Limited are to be of a nominal value of rupees 10 each and credited up and issued at rupees 15 per share. Now the point is that what is the logic of this particular statement and what use this particular line will have and what replication it will have on the solution of this particular question. First of all, this particular line makes two points clear that we are going to pay you some, some payment through equity shares. Number one. Second replication is that whatever share we are going to issue you, those share will have a face value of rupees 10 each at the rate of rupees 8, but we will issue them at the rate of rupees 15, have an issue price of 15, 8 paid up. Is it clear to you? Suppose, suppose, if I issue 1000 shares of rupees 10 each, 8 paid up, 8 paid up at the rate of let us say 15. And if I, if I would ask you, how much amount I must have received? You could have, you can easily answer me, sir, 1000 into 15 makes 15,000. Obviously, you would, you must have received 15,000, absolutely clear. Now, suppose if I divide 15,000, the amount which I have received, by 15, I can also get the number of shares. That means 1000 share I must have issued, correct? At a issue rate of 15. So, here this particular point means that purchasing company whenever is making the payment its face value will be its face value will be this much 10 paid up value will be 8 and issue price will be rupees 50 and at the same time we have to find out what proportion of the total payments we are making by way of equity share but how to find that out problem is this First of all, you think, think on some logical lines. If you are acquiring the business of X Limited and Y Limited, are you going to acquire them at free or cost virtually now? You have to make some payment. You have to compute the purchase consideration. Now, so your next step is, in order to know the logic of point number three, let's, point number four, let's have a look over here. First of all, here what I am trying to do, I am trying to find out the amount of purchase consideration. Why I want to know the amount of purchase consideration? Reason being is that without knowing the amount of purchase consideration, I would not know actually what part of the consideration I am making payment through equity share. Correct? In order to find out purchase consideration, I have already told you, whenever we compute the purchase consideration, we are the purchasing company, we will take over the assets and liabilities of the acquiry company or the vendor company. That means I will take over all your assets, of course, at fair value or revised value if there is any and I will subtract the liability. I have already told that goodwill of X Limited is valued at 48 and Y Limited is 38. Property, plant and equipment, whatever book value is given, you add 10% to it and then write over here 20,90,000. Similarly, 
सेवन लैख सिक्सटी प्लस टेन परसेंट विल बिकम एट लैख थर्टी सिक्स नॉन करेंट इन्वेस्टमेंट रिवाइज वैल्यू इज ऑलरेडी गिवन अंडर पॉइंट नंबर वन देन करेंट एसेट देर इज नो चेंज इन करेंट एसेट सोफा दीज आर दी एसेट आई एम टेकिंग टेकिंग ओवर एंड देर आर टू लाइबिलिटीज ओनली एज आई जस्ट टोल्ड यू ट्वेल्व परसेंट डिवेंचर दिस पॉइंट यू नोट एंड हेयर आई हैव रिटर्न एज पर टू एज पर पॉइंट नंबर टू आई टोल्ड यू दैट वी आर टेकिंग ओवर योर कंपनीज डिवेंचर एट वन लैख सिक्सटी थाउजेंड सो डोंट राइट हेयर टू लैख टू लैख द अमाउंट विच इज रिटर्न इन दी वट वी कॉल बैलेंस शीट एट वट वैल्यू यू आर टेकिंग दम ओवर बिकॉज यू आर गोइंग टू मेक दम ए पेमेंट ऑफ वट वी कॉल वन सिक्सटी सो दैट इज वाई यू विल हैव टू एक्सरसाइज केयर इन क्वेश्चन हेयर राइट हेयर वन सिक्सटी एंड सिमिलरली यू हैव टेकन ओवर डिवेंचर्स ऑफ वाई लिमिटेड एट एटी थाउजेंड बिकॉज यू आर गोइंग टू मेक दम ए पेमेंट ऑफ एटी थाउजेंड देन यू विल सब्रेक्ट वट वी कॉल करेंट लाइबिलिटी दिस विल गिव यू द अमाउंट ऑफ परचेज कंसिडरेशन डेट मीन दिस मच ऑफ पेमेंट यू आर सपोज टू मेक टू एक्स लिमिटेड एंड ऑफकोर्स टू वाई लिमिटेड सेवेंटीन लैख फोर्टी थाउजेंड वी हैव ऑलरेडी सीन डेट इन ऑर्डर टू पे थर्टी वन लैख ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड से परचेज कंसिडरेशन डेट मीन दिस इज द अमाउंट विच द परचेजिंग कंपनी विल हैव टू पे टू होम द पेमेंट इज डन पेमेंट इज ऑलवेज डन टू द ओनर्स ऑफ द कंपनी हू आर द ओनर्स ऑफ द कंपनी ओनर्स ऑफ द कंपनी ऑफ प्रेफरेंस शेयर होल्डर और इक्विटी शेयर होल्डर डेट मीन दिस अमाउंट यू विल हैव टू पे टू द प्रेफरेंस शेयर होल्डर ऑफ दीज कंपनीज एंड इक्विटी शेयर होल्डर ऑफ दीज कंपनीज इज ए क्लियर टू यू सो वी हैव ऑलरेडी सीन एंड वी हैव कंप्यूटेड अंडर स्टेप नंबर थ्री डेट वी आर मेकिंग ए पेमेंट बाई वे ऑफ प्रेफरेंस शेयर टू दी एक्सटेंट ऑफ वन लैख ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड जस्ट मूवेंट एगो आई टोल्ड यू डेट वन लैख वर्थ ऑफ प्रेफरेंस शेयर कैपिटल होल्डर्स आर बींग पेड एट वन लैख ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड सिमिलरली टू लैख वर्थ ऑफ प्रेफरेंस शेयर होल्डर विल बी मेड ए पेमेंट ऑफ टू लैख फोर्टी थाउजेंड बाई वे ऑफ प्रेफरेंस शेयर करेक्ट सो दिस इज हाउ आई एम गोइंग टू राइट हेयर प्रेफरेंस शेयर कैपिटल वन ट्वेंटी एंड टू लैख फोर्टी डेट मीन आउट ऑफ परचेज कंसिडरेशन ऑफ थर्टी वन लैख ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड वन लैख ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड वर्थ ऑफ पेमेंट हैज बीन डन बाई वे ऑफ प्रेफरेंस शेयर कैपिटल सिमिलरली आउट ऑफ सेवेंटीन लैख फोर्टी थाउजेंड वर्थ ऑफ परचेज कंसिडरेशन आई हैव डन ए पेमेंट ऑफ टू लैख फोर्टी थाउजेंड बाई वे ऑफ प्रेफरेंस शेयर कैपिटल वंस वी आर अवेयर ऑफ इट नाउ थर्टी वन लैख ट्वेंटी माइनस वन लैख ट्वेंटी वट एवर रिमेनिंग पोर्शन ऑफ परचेज कंसिडरेशन विल बी देयर ऑब्वियसली नाउ इट इज योर बाउंडेड ड्यूटी टू मेक दैट पेमेंट बाई वे ऑफ इक्विटी शेयर सो एट लीस्ट वी हैव फाउंड आउट दैट वट परपोर्शन ऑफ द परचेज कंसिडरेशन विल बी पेड थ्रू वट वी कॉल इक्विटी शेयर इज इट क्लियर टू यू और नॉट सिमिलरली सी पेमेंट टू डिवेंचर इज नॉट कंसिडर्ड एज अ पार्ट ऑफ परचेज कंसिडरेशन तो सो डोंट गेट कंफ्यूज बाय द फैक्टर सर वाई यू हैव एन डिडक्टेड हेयर वट वी कॉल डिवेंचर पेमेंट that is the reason first you compute the purchase consideration segregate it into payment by way of uh, preference share and equity shares similarly out of 17 lakh 40000 worth of purchase consideration of y limited you are making a payment worth 2 lakh 40000 in the form of preference shares whatever you are left up with that is 15 lakh that payment you will have to make by way of equity share capital now another important facet and twist to this particular question which most of us actually sometimes find it difficult to what we call consume definitely so this was the point i was trying to tell you over there when i was trying to tell you if i am going to issue 1000 shares of 10 each at 8 paid up in this question it, they have made the question extremely what we call complicated especially to the student fraternity correct in fact to everybody that is the reason you are not having the solution from any side so far barring one no doubt about that correct so this line says that whenever whenever this particular company is going to make the payment by way of equity share equity share will carry a nominal value of 10 each paid up value of 8 and issue price of rupees 50 now you remember i asked you a question if i will issue 1000 shares of 10 each 8 paid up at the rate of 15 i will derive 15000 and if i want to know how much number of shares i will have to divide it by what we call issue price now i am asking you a very simple question i have to make a payment to x limited by way of what we call equity share capital the amount of payment is 30 lakh payment amount is 30 lakh if i want to know and if i also give you this particular picture that i am issuing a share of 10 each nominal value is 10 8 is the paid up value but issue price is 15 issue price is 15 and if i want you to actually find out the number of share how will you do so all you have to do is divide 30 lakh the total amount of equity share capital payment is 30 lakh divided by 15 and you will get that you will get 2 lakh and it means that your company will issue 2 lakh shares of 10 each eight paid up at the rate of 15 to make a payment of 30 lakh by way of equity shares 
you have to make a payment of total 31 lakh 20 out of that preference share capital will cover up 1 lakh 20 rest 30 lakhs will be covered by equity share capital and in case of equity share capital you have to find out how many number of shares you are issuing you are issuing 2 lakh shares of 10 each 8 paid up at the rate of 15. If I am issuing somebody 2 lakh share, 8 paid up, it means the amount of nominal value of share capital will be 2 lakh into 8, that is 16 lakh. And because 8 paid up is being issued at 15, that means the amount of security premium will be equal to 2 lakh into 7, 14 lakh. You can see total is equal to 30 lakh. 30 lakh worth of payment is made through equity share capital. But now I also come to know that in order to make the payment by way of equity shares, this equity share nominal value is 16 lakh which we are issuing and on it we are getting a premium of 14 lakh. Similar is the case with respect to what we call Y limited. You have to make a payment of total 17 lakh 40 out of that 2 lakh 40 will be covered by issuance of preference shares. Rest of the payment 15 lakh will be covered by issue of equity shares. How many equity shares you will issue? Same logic divide 15 lakh by 15 you will get 1 lakh share. It means 1 lakh shares of 10 each 8 paid up issued at the rate of 15. 1 lakh share, 8 paid up, issued at 15. Indirectly it means out of this 15 lakh, share capital amount is equal to 8 lakh, 1 lakh into 8 and out of that 1 lakh into 7 will be equal to 7 lakh. Once you are done up with this, the only thing remaining is total share capital of our company is 50 lakh. How I have come to know about that, that I will tell, tell you later because in this question later on we will study that total authorized share capital of XY Limited is rupees 50 lakh. That means our total number of share which maximum we can issue to public, which we can maximum issue in our life is 5 lakh into 10 rupees 50 lakh. Now out of rupees 50 lakh, try to understand here, this is very tricky point. Out of this, we have already issued, see here, we have already issued 2 lakh number of shares in fact you can look here 2 lakh shares here and 1 lakh shares here that means out of 5 lakh xy limited that is purchasing company has already issued 2 lakh and 1 lakh share that is 3 lakh share to the liquidators of these two companies liquidators of these two company means x and y company will get liquidated so we'll make the payment to the liquidators that means out of 5 lakh 3 lakh shares have already exhausted in payment to the liquidators we are now remained we are now having only 2 lakh share 5 lakh minus 3 lakh 2 lakh share question is also telling later on in in fact in the last line that after what we call our authorized share capital capital will be this much and after issuance of share to the liquidators of the respective company the remaining shares have been issued to public now out of 5 lakh 3 lakh already issued now you are left up with only 2 lakh share now these 2 lakh share will be issued to public now in this question it is clearly given that whenever this company will issue the share it will issue the shares it will issue the share at 15 it is clear because issue price is 15 so that means remaining 2 lakh share if i will issue I, how much i will get 30 lakh bank account debit share capital 2 lakh share into 10 to 20 lakh and security premium will be equal to 100 lakh in fact these are the lines which let me explain you so that you can understand it better. After this particular line, in fact, this was the line I was trying to tell you and its treatment I have already told. Authorized equity share capital of XY Limited is rupees 50 lakh. That means divided into 5 lakh equity shares of 10 each. After issuing the required number of share to, the, to X and Y Limited, XY Limited issued balance of the share to the public. This is what exactly we did. Correct? Point number six says that liquidation expenses of X Limited and Y Limited are 1000. But these expenses are borne by XY Limited. Acquirer company, purchasing company borne these expenses. Now under AS14, under AS14, in the books of purchasing company, when purchasing company bears the expense, the entry is goodwill account debit to bank account. Actually expenses are not debited to PNL, rather debited to goodwill account. That means 2000, 1000 worth of expenses will be debited to goodwill account. So because of this entry, your cash account will get reduced by 1000 and goodwill amount will get moved up by 3000. In fact, 2000 plus 1000. 
Further, there is another line it is written that it was decided that these expenses will be borne by XY Limited that I have done. Expenses on incorporation of XY Limited is equal to 1000. Expenses on incorporation. Incorporation expenses are always debited to profit and loss account. Profit and loss account debit to bank account. In the books of acquiry company, you will write this entry. 3000, 3000. Correct? Last point. Last point is a statutory reserve is to be maintained for three years. Just a moment ago when I started what we call discussing this particular question, I told you generally purchasing company will never ever take over, never ever take over share capital, preference share capital, general reserve, profit and loss account and logically speaking even statutory reserves. These reserves are generally not taken. It's Share capital, preference share capital and reserves and, and surplus item of acquiring company are never ever taken over by the purchasing company. However, sometimes you may be given some information with respect to statutory reserve because statutory reserve need to be prepared for a specific period of time, generally 10 years period of time. And let us say after the seventh year, actually we have taken over these two companies. Now remaining period responsibility will fall upon our shoulders. So. It is given in the question that statutory reserves need to be maintained for three more years. Indirectly, it means you have to now bring forward the statutory reserves of these two companies. Correct? So, if ever in the question it is given that entity of statutory reserves need to be what we call maintained for a specific period of time, the entry which is passed by acquirer company, generally under amalgamation, we don't use the word acquirer company, rather purchasing company. So, entry will be amalgamation adjustment account debit to statutory reserve account. That is 3,000, 3, 3 lakh or 3,000, I have forgotten the figure. 2 lakh plus 1 lakh, 3 lakh. So, these reserves will have to be brought forward. But this entry will not make any impact in the balance sheet. Why? Because statutory reserve is reflected as an item of equity. Under reserve and surplus, I will write a statutory reserve 3 lakh. And amalgamation adjustment account is a sort of fictitious asset. And nowadays, even fictitious assets are written as negative item in the reserve and surplus. So, this is a positive item. This is a negative item. Ultimately, they, bo they both will what we call get neutralized. So, nothing will appear in the balance sheet. This is how you have to solve this particular question. So, first step, I have already told you. First, I have explained the point regarding the venture. Then, how many preferences we are going to issue. Most tricky point is not calculation of purchase consideration. Neither how much payment we are making through preference share. The main important point is what amount you are going to pay through equity share. And second important point is how you are going to analyze that this particular, these lines which have been given in the question. So now we have done up this particular question. First of all, on equity and liability side, first we start with, in fact, asset side. Now, first of all, current assets, see here, I have written 8,26,000. Why I have written 8,26,000? Because it is given in the balance sheet. Correct? As it is, their debt will make 13,66,000. Now I have added here 30 lakh. From where I am getting 30 lakh, let me see. See here, I told you, we are going to issue remaining share to the public, so we are going to receive 30 lakh. Remaining 2 lakh shares will be issued at the rate of 15, so your cash balance will also increase 30 lakh. And I have subtracted 4,000. Why? Because when we will pay liquidation expenses, correct, 3,000 will move out. And similarly, incorporation expense 1,000, so total 4,000 will move out. And our balance will be 43 lakh 62,000. Absolutely correct. Non-current investment 4 lakh 16 and 6 lakh 26,000. You will write 10 lakh 42. It is also correct. Goodwill 48 and 38 and plus 3,000 because we just passed the entry goodwill account debit to bank account. So our goodwill account will be 89,000 and likewise property plant and equipment 29 lakh 26,000. Your answers is answers are correct correct and you must compliment me on also in this regard correct must be there must be at least 150 what we call comments this time i want to know actually if you are getting such amazing awesome sort of what we call coaching you need to compliment and praise it wholeheartedly out of hurt that is the reason anyway current liability simply at 15 percent debentures your, see now, debentures of X and Y Limited will be paid out. 
by issuance of your company's debenture. So your company's debenture will come in the balance sheet 1 lakh 60 plus 80 that is equal to 2 lakh 40. Now under reserve and surplus I have written two items. One is security premium and another one is profit and loss account. Here your here's answer is different but our what we call entire net answers are absolutely same slight difference but we on our side feel actually that we are here more correct but I should say so at the same time we are getting the answers profit and loss account balance it could sometime difference also takes place due to the fact that they might have written towards asset side or something like that incorporation expenses when I paid I passed the entry profit and loss account debit to bank account now because of that profit and loss account will have a negative balance remember one thing is it clear to you and from where we got security premium just a moment ago I told you here when our company made a payment of 30 lakh by way of 30, uh, equity shares we issued 2 lakh shares and I told you share capital 16 lakh security premium 14 lakh similarly here 8 lakh and 7 lakh so this 14 plus 7 is equal to 21 lakh mm -hmm. and then when we issued remaining shares to the public again we got what we call 10 lakh worth of security premium so total amount will be equal to 31 lakh regarding preference share capital is very simple our company is issuing 1 lakh 20 thousand plus 2 lakh 40 thousand worth of preference share capital so 3 lakh 60 and authorized Authorized share capital is 50 lakh. After that, you write issued and subscribed capital that is 44 lakh. How it is 44 lakh? Very simple. Now, if we are going to add all these items, see here, share capital you have issued 16 lakhs. Here I am talking about. Then you issued 8 lakh worth of share capital that is equal to 24. And then we issued share capital to the extent of 20 lakh. I am I'm talking about nominal value. So nominal value of share capital will be equal to 44 lakh in the balance sheet. Is it clear to you? That is how you will have to do the solution of this particular question. To be very honest with you, with great difficulty, I have been able to squeeze time out today actually to cover up this particular question. So on that particular account, I will take leave of you now. Hope that you must have enjoyed today's this particular session and most of you who were querying about this particular thing and virtually very keen and curious to have the solution must have got satisfaction. So on this account, we take leave of you and shall meet you again then. Same time.